All right, now in this video, we're going to move on and start to learn how to create graded activities in your course, such as quizzes or assignments, and look at how to possibly use rubrics with those assignments, uh, and then also look at how to organize your gradebook. All right, if you do have a home page in your course, uh, we need to go back to the modules area. Maybe you have a link to the modules on the home page, or you can click on modules here in the course navigation menu. And this, again, is where we're always going to go to build our course to the modules area. Yes, you can go to the assignments item in your course menu and add an assignment there or the quizzes item in the menu and add a quiz there. But I would recommend always adding items here on the modules page because otherwise, if you do say go add a quiz to the quizzes area, you may forget to add it here to the modules. And the modules area, again, is the primary area where you want to have your students go to see the structure and organization of your course. Let's start by adding a quiz. Again, look for that plus symbol next to the module. Click on it, and then there's this pop-up at the top again that shows all the different types of things you can add to a module. We're going to add a quiz. So let's select that. There's no existing quizzes yet, so let's click New Quiz and enter a name. We'll call this Syllabus Quiz. Again, this is a kind of quiz where you can add questions that are to, designed to get your students to make sure they read your syllabus or go through your orientation module. And then click Add Item. And now there's an empty, unpublished quiz here in the module. Before I publish it, I'm going to go ahead and work on it some. So I'm just going to click on the link to Syllabus Quiz. And there's an Edit button at the top where we can start building the quiz. When you're in the Edit mode of the quiz, there's two main areas to edit that are denoted by these tabs at the top, Details and Questions. The Details area has options like the due date and so on for your quiz. The Questions area is where you actually add the questions for your quiz. But let's start with the details. Again, you can add any kind of text or multimedia at the top of the quiz. Say you have a video you want them to comment on or so on. Then we have the quiz type. This is very useful. Uh, by default, it shows graded quiz, but you can also just have a practice quiz that's not graded at all. There's also an option to create a survey. You may, might have an ungraded survey where you just ask for their feedback on a module or uh, do something like an exit ticket or a muddiest point kind of survey where you ask them, what are, what are things you're still unclear about from this lesson, or what do you think is the main thing that you learned from this lesson? Uh, you can also make the survey be graded. That's where they just get a grade just for participating, basically, answering anything in the survey, just to encourage all your students to complete the survey and not skip it. Next, down a little bit lower, uh, there's an option to shuffle the answers. If you have a regular multiple choice quiz, that's a useful one to check so that the correct answer may be C for one student for one question, but when another student takes the quiz, it may be B or A. It could be any other random choice to kind of prevent copying of answers uh, between students. You can then check whether or not you want to allow multiple attempts for the quiz and how many attempts to allow, uh, whether or not you want students to see their responses at the end of the quiz, and whether or not you want them to see the correct answers. So that's another one you may want to uncheck or uh, if you do want to let them see correct answers, you can set a date so that they can't see the correct answers until after the due date, for example. So again, to prevent uh, cheating or copying. And then there's some other options, but the primary one is the due date. Click this little calendar icon to choose a due date for your quiz. The available from and until dates, these are dates surrounding the due date. Available from usually is before the due date. That says, when does this quiz become open and available for students to take? And then the until date is when does this quiz go away, for example. If you don't want to allow any late attempts on this quiz after the due date, you obviously would then set the until date to be the same as your due date. Uh, and then just hit save to save your, chan your changes. And let's start working on the actual questions in the quiz. We'll edit again and go to the questions area. And there's three main buttons that you use to build and add questions to your quiz. The main one we'll use is this new question button, but first let me explain these other two buttons. The find questions button will help you search for questions if you do have question banks in your course. You can click this link to view any question banks you may have that are imported from a publisher or imported from a Blackboard or so on. You can uh, also get to the question banks by going to quizzes in your course menu and then these three vertical dots in this button. Click on that and you'll see manage question banks. Let's go back to the quiz and edit again. And again, click on questions. The next uh, button is this new question group button. This allows you to create a group of, say, you have a group of 20 questions and you want to randomly select 10 questions from that group for students 
Uh, so it'll randomly select those questions. And again, that'll be different random questions for different students. Uh, but finally, there's the new question button. That's, again, the main one we'll use to create one question at a time. And it has this form where you can fill out the details of the question. First, there's a label field where we can say, say we want to ask a question of students like, what are my office hours, just to make sure they read that in the syllabus. I might label this an office hours question. And then this pop-up lets you choose what type of question in this quiz is it going to be. A, a regular multiple choice question, true, false, fill in the blank. Essay question is very common too. You might have a matching question. Uh, for those of you who teach math and science courses or related courses, there's even a formula question where the answer for uh, different students answering this question might be different, but it's automatically calculated based on a formula. But that's just do a regular multiple cho choice question. In, in this area of the big editor, that's where we put the actual question. And again, since we're using this rich content editor, your question might have an embedded video even, or a link, or whatever you like, or an image, or multiple images. But we'll just simply type in, what are my office hours? Then below this uh, are the choices where we can enter choices for this question. Let's say, uh, we'll say Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday Friday, uh, 1 to 2. And I'll just do a few uh, re examples at random. 2 to 4. And say uh, Monday, Wednesday, 1 to 2. Something like that. Say we only want three uh, choices. And there's four here by default. Well, you can just hit the trash can icon here to delete that option. What if you want five options? Well, you just click here down here where it says add another answer, and that'll add a fifth option. I'll do that now, but now I can hit the trash can to remove them again. Uh, and then you'll notice these little boxes under, underneath show the feedback for each item. If they did choose option B, what feed, which is incorrect, what feedback would you like to give them? And if you don't want this first answer to be the correct answer, you can hover over the other choices and click to move this green arrow, which indicates what's the correct answer. And then finally, these other boxes at the bottom are for overall feedback after they've answered the entire question, it, depending on green if they got it correct, red if it's incorrect, or other general comments you want to give them. Let's go ahead and hit the blue button to save our changes to this question. And now we've added one question to the quiz. Let's add one other different type of question, too, just for the sake of it. Let's add an essay type question. Uh, for example, you might want to at the beginning of the semester, add some metacognitive type prompts like uh, what are your goals for this course or what grade do you expect to get in this course? So let's click plus new question and we'll say this is a goals question and make it an essay question. And again, just say what, what are your goals for this course? And uh, if you want to give any feedback at the end, like thank you for your uh, input or whatever, you can add that in this box. But let's go ahead and hit update question. And now we've got two questions in our quiz. And let's go ahead and hit save. I'm actually going to go ahead and do save and publish because that's all I'm going to add for this quiz, for this video. And now we're back at the quiz page again. We see that it is published. We can preview what it looks like to students with this preview button. But also you can switch to student view to also actually complete the quiz and grade it or, or look at the grade if you like. I'll do uh, try answering the questions and then submit. So it gives you an idea of how what your question your quiz looks like once you've uh, created it. And I did forget to mention about the grades for the quiz. How many how many points is a quiz worth? That's uh, when I. Uh, go back to the questions tab when I'm editing the quiz I can see that one it by default gives one point per question if you want to change that or if you want to edit any of your questions you can hover over and click the pencil icon to edit a question these little grid of dots here on the left also lets you drag to reorder the questions in your quiz but let's uh, click the pencil icon let's say here and edit this essay question to just be zero points or or two points whatever you like and then update question and save again and now uh, it's edited the total points for the quiz so again make sure you look at what how many points your quiz is worth if you if you're shooting for a particular total point score you may need to tweak your number of questions or the points per question all right so next let's go look at how to create assignments in our course and there's two main types of assignments but they both use the same tool uh, there's uh, regular kind of online assignments where say students upload a paper for you to grade 
Or another type of assignment is where students are doing something in a face-to-face -face class in class. They don't have to submit anything here in Canvas, but you still want to create an assignment here in Canvas so you can add it to your gradebook. But let's explore about that. Let's first go and add an assignment to a module. Again, uh, hitting the plus symbol. And by default, it shows assignment already for us. So let's click New Assignment. And let's say we want them to submit some paper. We'll call it a purpose paper, just for the sake of this video, and add item. And again, we have, uh, in this case, I probably wouldn't want it in the orientation module, maybe something they do in the first week. I can just drag it down to week one. And I'm going to go ahead and publish it in this case, too, just so I don't forget to publish it later. And I'm going to click on the purpose paper link, though, to actually look at the assignment and start editing the assignment to uh, add instructions here at the top for what they need to do for this paper. And these are different options for all assignments. Uh, there's the points for this assignment. Say I want to make it 100 points. Then uh, scroll down and we see, let me zoom out a little bit. To, this is what it normally looks like. There's one other er area here that you really want to look at too where it says submission type. This is what I was getting at before, that there's different types of assignments. A regular online assignment where they're uploading a paper uh, to Canvas. Or there's on paper. This is where they're submitting something on paper in a face-to-face -face class, but they're not submitting anything in Canvas. And then there's no submission. That's sort of basically the same as on paper. It's where you're the one who's going to be entering the grade, uh, but the students are not doing anything in Canvas for this assignment. Let's go first to the online uh, option for submission type. And you see some online options appear. This, uh, these are options for how students can submit this assignment. Is it a text entry where they type it right here in the browser? Or is it a website URL where they have to submit a link to something? A media recording, they can uh, record right in the browser, a, a video message or something like that. And then there's the, mo the most traditional option, though, is file uploads. So let's check that. And you can then also check this other checkbox if you wish, wish to restrict what types of files they can upload to the uh, assignment. Traditionally, you'd want to say uh, the Word uh, documents or PDF files, for example. And what they want here is a comma separated list of the different file extensions uh, that are allowed for this assignment. So I'll say DOC comma DOCX comma PDF. If you're doing, uh, say, spreadsheets, you might do XLS and XLSX. Next, uh, there is an option here for plagiarism testing. We uh, at our school are using unit checks. So if you are having them upload a paper that you want to check for plagiarism, you can uh, select unit check. Uh, I'll do that here just for the sake of uh, showing how it works, although maybe you may or may not need this tool. And once I select that option, there's some options for the unit check tool, whether you want to exclude submissions, the student papers from your institutional repository, you may want to turn that on if you're having a draft paper assignment, for example, and you want students to just see their own plagiarism reports to see if there's stuff they need to fix. And I'll turn that on for now. And then there's some other options for Unicheck you can explore. Like I might recommend uh, increasing some of these values at the bottom because uh, Unicheck tends to match a lot of stuff that isn't plagiarism. It just uh, is coincidental matches. And then there's an option of whether or not you want to, students to see their plagiarism reports from Unicheck or not. Scroll down a little bit farther, and there's, again, the same due date and available and until dates, just like we saw with the quiz. And then I'm going to hit Save. And uh, the assignment is, is uh, ready now. We can see the description at the top. We can see some of the options we set, like the due date, the points. That's a file upload assignment. And let's look at, though, how does this work from your point of view grading it and from the student point of view, how they submit a paper uh, in Canvas. Oh, but before I forget, though, uh, there is an option to add a rubric to an assignment, too. And you can also add rubrics to discussions, which we'll get more into that in the next video. You see this plus rubric button? I'm just going to click on that, and I can, if I already have some rubrics in the course, perhaps that were imported from a template or so on, I can click this Find a Rubric button to find which rubric I want to use for this assignment. Or you can just create a brand new rubric. I'll call this, say, Purpose Paper Rubric. And if you're not familiar with rubrics, it's basically a table of criteria that you use for evaluating some assignment. Uh, for a paper, you might have a criteria, for example, of grammar or spelling or other things like that. And each criteria is a row in this table. And then the columns next to the criteria show the different levels uh, that can be scored for that criteria. Say we 
uh, want to edit this uh, default criterion that they added for us, I'm going to click the pencil icon and let's call this, uh, let's just call it spelling. I'm not a writing instructor, so I know this rubric isn't going to be ideal. And how do we want to evaluate spelling? We might give full credit here. Uh, let's say we'll give them 50 points if they have no spelling errors. So I'm going to edit this first level and say no spelling errors. And then there's another level that's already given to us for zero points. So I'll, I'll say that's uh, five or more spelling errors. Again, I'm not a writing instructor. Say we want to have more than just those two levels. We can hit the plus symbol to, to add a new level in the middle. And I'll say this is one, two, four spelling errors. Or I guess I need to make it one to five. And it by default gave it a score in the middle of 25 points. You can add as many levels as you, as you want, but usually three or four, possibly five levels is probably about as far as you want to go to make. Because the point of this is not just to help you with grading the assignment. This will make grading a lot easier. But it also will be shown to the students before they submit so they can get a clear understanding of what is expected for their uh, and how their assignment is going to be graded. Say we want to add a second criterion on grammar. I can hit the plus criterion link here. Uh, and it, it popped up this little window where I can either duplicate an existing level or create a new one. I'll just duplicate the spelling one uh, and call it grammar instead. And edit these to say no grammatical errors. Real quick. <laughs> and uh, the similar kind of level of criterion to give the students. And now we've got two criterions. They happen to add up to 100 points, which matches the 100 points. But say instead we, we said it was 25 points for each one. Um, just to show you what happens if that occurs, where the rubric does not match the assignment points. One last thing before we hit the blue button to create and save this rubric is usually you want to check this option below here that says use this rubric for assignment grading. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Now I'm going to click the blue button to create the rubric. And it pops up this message message that says, hey, I noticed your rubric says 50 points, but your assignment says 100. What do you want to do? Change your assignment to match the rubric or just leave them separate? Usually you want to keep your rubric and assignment in sync. I'm going to go ahead and hit change. And now both the assignment and the rubric say 50 points. Now let's see what this looks like from the student point of view and your point of view when you're grading assignments. Let's switch back to student view. I'm going to click home and then the student view button and that's upload a paper to that assignment. Now we're back in the student view I have to go to modules to see the assignment. It's down here where it says purpose paper. I can click on that and remember I'm in student view so this is what it looks like from their point of view. There's the description where you hopefully have a better description than what I put for what they need to do for this assignment. You can again you can attach files to this description too if you uh, have any resources you want them to look at before they submit their paper. They see the rubric too, so they have to click this blue submit button to uh, get the form to choose a file and upload a file for this assignment. So I'm going to just choose that same syllabus file that I uh, did earlier, just for the sake of this video. And you can, uh, they can also submit more than one file if you happen to have an assignment like that. They can leave comments when they submit their file, like uh, something they want to, a message they want to give you. Uh, since I did check the plagiarism detection option for this assignment, there's also this checkbox here. It says this submission is my own original work. That to uh, assure you that this is their own original work. I have to check that and then they click the blue button to submit their assignment. And then it will confirm to them on the right it says submission turned in and they even have a link to re-download their file if they need to. So now let's switch back to the teacher view, the instructor view, and grade that assignment. So I'm going to click leave student view and it instantly takes me back to the same assignment but in teacher view. And now we notice here on the top right it says zero out of one submissions graded. So if I want to grade a submission I can click on the link to the speed grader. This is another great tool in Canvas that will save you a lot of time. If you download the Canvas teacher app too the speed grader is built into it. It popped me open into a new tab right to the speed grader for this student. Speed grader is a tool that lets you grade each student's uh, assignment one at a time. And in the middle here on this big pane is what they call the doc viewer. This loads up the paper that they submitted. 
I uploaded a, temp, a template syllabus. And at the top here, this gray bar, are some tools I can use to annotate their paper. Like if I want to highlight some text, if I want to change the color of that highlight, or leave a text annotation, I can type and so on. There's a point annotation tool, or I can leave a comment, and the strike through tool, and uh, I can page through the assignment and leave any kind of annotations on the paper itself. Uh, over on the right is uh, if you did have a rubric attached to your summit, you can click this view rubric button and right away it shows the rubric. Uh, I'm going to hover over this middle bar to drag it over a little bit to give a little bit more room to that rubric to show you a little bit more what it looks like. And to grade it, I can just click right on the rubric uh, cells to give automatically give them a score. And this little green box below the score on each criterion is where I can leave a comment just for that uh, that grade. So I could say spelling issues in your first paragraph or something like that. Click update comments. Uh, before I hit save, or I'll go ahead and hit save actually, I can leave uh, at the bottom here, I can leave overall text comments or I can attach a file. Like if you have your own annotated version of their paper you want to attach, there's a, a media comment button here where I can record a, a, a video of me commenting on their paper as I'm walking through the paper. Or you can just upload an audio comment where, uh, or actually, I'm sorry, this is a speech recognition comment where as I talk in the microphone, it will type out the words I'm saying. Uh, I'll go ahead and submit, uh, I'll make a comment that says great work, and submit that too to have an overall comment. And once you're ready to move on to the next student, you can go over here to the top right and go on to the next student in your course and do the grading for them too. There's some buttons here in the very top left too that have some other tools like if you want to mute this assignment while you're grading that's so students won't get notifications while you're in the middle of grading the class. But mainly on the very top left is a button to go directly to the gradebook. I'm going to click that now. And uh, this shows what the gradebook looks so far. It's uh, If you've used other learning management systems they're usually very similar. There's uh, the column which shows the student name. There's a cell for the quiz. Uh, and then a cell for, and the column for the purpose paper assignment we created. And at the bot, at the very far right, this is the total column. You just can't read that right now. I usually like to move the total column to the beginning because you know, obviously with a regular class, you may end up with a bunch of columns here in this gradebook. I'm going to click the three little dots and say move to front. And now the total column is right there at the beginning. So while we're here in the gradebook, just to show you, there's some other options. At the end of the semester, when you're ready to submit your grades to the banner system, you can click this actions menu and say sync to export final grades to banner that will pop up a form you can double check all the final grades for your course uh, and then it will send it automatically to the banner system you can export your gradebook to a spreadsheet and then uh, import uh, that spreadsheet too if you wish uh, there's some a few other options in this gear icon like whether you want to automatically uh, give a grade for uh, missing assignments or automatically deduct points for late assignments. A lot of neat, neat little features in this gradebook. One uh, little issue though when you're in the gradebook is where did my course navigation menu go? Sometimes people get kind of stuck here. Uh, how do you get back to where your main course is? You have to click these three little lines here. They call this the hamburger menu to bring back your course menu. And you see basically where we are is we basically did the same thing as if we'd clicked this grades item in our menu. But that's uh, real quickly though, go back to student view one last time to see what the grades look like from the student point of view. When you're a student and you go to your course, they'll get a no notification here next to grades that says, hey, there's something that's been graded. They can click on that and they can see, hey, my purpose paper's been graded. There's the score. If they click these little icons next to the assignment, they can see the overall comments I left or the last icon shows them their rubric scores so they can view that. They can also leave comments if they want to uh, go back to the uh, purpose paper and leave more comments on their grade if they wish. Let's go back to the teacher view and look at one last thing in this video. That's how to organize the, this gradebook. We actually don't organize it here on the gradebook page like you would in, say, Blackboard. If you want to add an assignment, you don't add a column here or, or do anything like calculated columns. The place where you organize your gradebook is the assignments area in your course. So let's click on that now. And this assignments page, it looks very similar to the modules page, but it's not the same. It lists all the graded activities only in your course, such as quizzes, assignments, or graded discussions. And I'll show you how to make a graded discussion activity in the next video. 
basically the order that you have things on this page is the order that they'll show up in your gradebook. So say I wanted this purpose paper first, I can just drag it to put it first. If you look at the small text uh, beneath each graded activity, you'll, you'll see some details about it, like what module it's in, the due date, and the points. A common thing that you may want to do in your course is organize your assignments into groups too, or categories, like say you have a homework category, uh, a quiz category, and so on. To do that, you see it's already uh, put all your assignments in a category or group called assignments. Say instead we want to create a, a quiz category and a, a, a essays category. Let's rename this default group by clicking the three dots next to the group and I can edit it and I'll call this uh, quizzes. And you see also too there's a little option here like if you want to drop the lowest quiz in this group you can set that here say drop one the, the one lowest score or even the two lowest scores whatever you wish and I'm going to hit save and now it's renamed it to quizzes. How do I add a second group or category? I hit the plus group button at the top and I'll create a second group called essays and hit save and that's added it here below and I'll drag this purpose paper down to that group and again the order that you have stuff is the order that will show up in the gradebook if you want this other group first I can just drag the whole group up uh, the next thing to show you though is sometimes uh, people like to have percentage weighting for their groups too like say quizzes are worth 25 percent homeworks worth 20 percent and so on how do you do that in canvas you first have to turn on the percentage weighting feature in Canvas. You do that by going to the three dots at the very top right, and it says, it says Assignment Groups Weight. I click that, and there's a checkbox to turn on this option to weight the final grade based on percentages. And right here, I can type in the percentages for each group as I wish. I can say 20%, 25%. If I hit Save, it shows the percentages to the right of each group. I can edit a group. And it shows the percentage there too. So like if I want to change just this one group, you do need to make sure that your percentages of all your groups add up to 100%. Um, if you do want to have a bonus assignment, you can uh, create add an assignment to the group that's only worth zero points. And then when you grade it, give more than zero points. So just one last time to wrap up this video, let's go back to the gradebook and we'll see that the uh, order of the assignments here on the assignments area will be the order that it shows up as columns in the gradebook area. There's the purpose paper first and then the syllabus quiz. So that wraps up assignments and grading. Uh, if you have any other questions feel free to contact uh, your support. Uh, in the next video we'll look at how to add interactivity to your course, collaboration, discussion, and how to communicate with your students with announcements and discussion boards.